And you're welcome back to Off the Ball Saturday here on News Talk. John Duggan with you through to six this evening. Munster have done it 26 10, the victory over Exeter in the European Champions Cup at Thomond Park. It means they've won the last 16 tie by 34 points to 23 over both legs. Let's go back to Limerick now and our match analyst, the former Munster and Leinster forward, Liam Toland, who was on commentary duty with Oshin Langan. And Liam, what we saw here were two evenly matched teams. It made for a gripping rugby, cup rugby, really. It was, and uh, I don't know how one would define if they're evenly matched. They certainly came into the fixture, and I was punting that Munster would be the, the victors today, not just because the home uh, aspect, but for a lot of other, other stores behind it. Uh, I was struck by one of the points that uh, Rob Baxter said before the game. He was saying, uh, go and finish the job. Well, actually, I think today we saw Munster start the job, and they showed that they have the ability to pay a style that is very much linked to the, their history and their culture. Whether Graham Roundtree announced that during the week, but you saw the impact of the Munster back row. Now, I'm a back row myself, so I'm always biased when I'm watching a match and, and, and spotting things. But you could not but see the impact of the Munster back row. They were involved in absolutely everything. And if you're teaching kids, like a 12-year-old, I'm playing number eight, so how should I play, Liam? Well, wherever the ball is, that's where you should be, whether it, it's you're defending or attacking. And that's what we saw from the Munster back row. We saw a style that must have been tailored to the wind, but I can't believe that that wasn't tailored in the sense that we want to play um, our game the way they played in that 40 minutes. It opened up a bit in the second half, and it, you could see the contrast to how Exeter were playing. They wanted to use the full width of the pitch, east coast, west coast. They played some lovely dandy rugby, but they weren't actually getting through any gaps. There were no gaps. Through all the doors and windows were closed. And then they started conceding breakdowns. Then they started putting a lot of numbers in, and they just couldn't get any purchase. And when they had an opportunity, the 10 minutes that uh, Conor Murray was off, and they had lots and lots of other scoring opportunities, most notably off the kicking tee, they missed seven points. They blew so many opportunities. Uh, because they didn't have a strangle over the game, they couldn't dominate the corridor power, and they couldn't dominate the breakdown. They were at their best off first phase play, and then their wingers, I felt, looked good, but were sloppy in possession. And it's just the hunger that Munster had, the game plan that they employed, and the crowd behind them made an almost impossible task for any visiting team. And it was a wonderful experience to be here, and it was a wonderful thing to watch. Yes, our rugby coverage and off the ball, thanks to Vodafone, uh, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team, team of us, everyone in. Peter O'Mahony, uh, it, was, it was just fantastic to watch it, wasn't it? It was, and uh, as I was saying in commentary about the idea of dovetailing in golf, you know, when one was doing something, you take a little break. Now, these guys don't take breaks, but the impact that the 6, 7 and 8 today had in the Munster jerseys was immense. And I just thought the consistency of effort that Peter Manny brought was just relentless. Like, uh, who was it, the, 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 the number 8? No, it wasn't even the number 8, I think it was yours was picked from the base of the scrum that he went down. I remember... Um, that World Cup game when Australia played Ireland down in, in Australia and Stephen Ferris met yeah. him with Gino and he says, right, not today, you're not coming around here today. And I got the sense that Peter Romani goes like, I don't know what you do, but this is what I do, you're not coming through here. And he just drove them back. He's, he was a bet man when he came off the pitch. He emptied the tank. Yeah. He's an older man, obviously, in terms of these guys, but he gave his absolute all. But the impact he had, and that's the point I was making in News Talk a couple of weeks ago, was why would you have a player who loves confrontation, has skill set, has ability, has technique, and is the, ble the breeding and bleeding heart of that team. Why would you put him out on the wings and hope that when he gets the ball, something magical will happen? He needs to be where the action is. And that's what we saw today. Uh, yeah. Whether he yeah. had the ball or not was irrelevant. He impacted everything he touched. Yeah, I think it was looking about 10 minutes ago, it was nine turnovers to three in favour of Munster. I, I don't know how many of those were Manny's, but a sizable bulk of them. And that use of the crowds and that, Liam, it gets everybody, it's almost like worth points. Yeah, but again, we were saying, you know, you got to reward your pack, but you also got to reward the, the crowd. I think it was 21,000 or 21,000 plus officially, and we can take that as an official because that doesn't include season tickets. So that's a genuine number of a genuine amount of people who came out to watch, and it was wonderful. And Munster rewarded the people who came here today, and that's something I've been banging on about for months, is that a lot of Munster uh, faithful who pay a lot of money and put a lot of effort getting in their car from West Cork and kept coming up here, they need to be rewarded rewarded and I think a game like today does an unbelievable amount of reward for all those people and they want to come back and that's really really important yeah they want that back again absolutely Joey Carberry was a great imagination for that try in the first half and he kicked well as well he did like again the kicking tee like the wind was brutally difficult to kick into he got like 
a really, really good quality kick in Exeter struggled. But the try he scored himself, like no better man. And Slade, by the way, to be fair to him, Slade is very similar in a sense. He can cut open. But the platform was left for him to have those opportunities. Now, if memory serves, I think it was Harry Williams, the, the uh, Exeter tight head, the big uh, long-haired guy, big brute of a man. Like, Joey Carberry, who's fresh and fit and nimble and able, would have looked up and said, oh, my God, I can't believe it. I got Harry Williams standing in front of me. Give me the ball quick. That's what he did ball in two hands cuts through inside and, it, and it's a try it looks easy but the platform that his monster pack laid for him allows that to happen just let you know folks uh, just uh, away from the rugby Man United have beaten Norwich 3-2 in the Premier League uh, Southampton have defeated Arsenal 1-0 Watford won Brentford 2 and Spurs nil Brighton won from earlier on so Man United right back in the hunt for top 4 it is Manchester City 1 Liverpool 3 in the FA Cup semi-finals um, the X Factor we talked about Zebo before the game Liam Toland and he was so instrumental in that turned out to be the winning try, the winning score of the game, because it was still a one-score game when Dialende got that try. It would, but wouldn't it have been the absolute, you know, icing on the cake if Zebo was to touch down yeah. to win it? It would be like, you know, we can write a book on that. There's a programme, and certainly a documentary on that. But what a quality player. Like, I don't think he's the player he was, and I don't think... I think there's an awful lot of traffic between him and, and getting back into the Irish side. But you can see quality, you know, what do they say about um, form and permanency? Like Last that guy, point. you know, he, he has pure class and he's so comfortable. He's one of these guys who can kind of suspend time momentarily. Like if I got that ball, I'd have been in the side of the ditch in seconds, you know. But he has the ability just to kind of second guess defenders and, and buy himself some time. And as once, he, once the defenders commit to doing something, then he delays it a little bit and gives it to a guy in a better position. Like, that's pure quality, pure class. Like, an absolute pure class. But for me, Dale Lande, like, again, during the during the game when Oshin was commenting, I'm just drifting along watching players and, and trying to pick up some interesting information. The work rate of that guy, you remember Stuart Hogg in the first half, there was a great attacking platform. Stuart Hogg way out on the, out the far touchline, chips over, and who was the guy to catch it? Dale Lande. He had to bust a gut to go from maybe 50, 60 metres to catch that ball in play. His work rate is relentless. His breakdown work is absolutely relentless. He carried a number of balls today, maybe three or four. He got across the gain line. He's a brilliant target for his, his back row. He's kind of... He'll be a huge loss. He's a huge loss. But if, if Roundtree wants to develop the style of game that they played in that first 40 minutes, someone like a Dale Andy is the perfect 12. Maybe Farrell will become that 12 in time, but he's, a, he's going to be a huge loss. Yeah, he wants to leave on a high, and you can see in his reaction to the try how much it meant to him, Liam. Oh, yeah. Like, like you know, it's a team sport, but at the core there is a fundamental selfishness with any athlete, whether you're an individual athlete or a team athlete. You want to perform you want to be picked you want to progress up the chain and you want to be in a team that wins so that's bottom line there's a selfishness in that it works because the culture of a team allows it to work but you can see the players how, how different they were in, in a two week span between this fixture and the Munster Leinster game uh, whenever it was a fortnight ago like these guys were pulling up potatoes they, they, were, they were leaving nothing unturned they were really absolutely nailing every opportunity that came their way and they were just wouldn't let Exeter off the hook at all and Exeter looked like a side that oh look we can just do this this and this like it was chess and a board and we'll give it to Slade he'll cut through or we'll give it to one of the wingers or Flaherty maybe Woodburn and they'll cut through and score a try that's what, what we always do but not today when you look at the big names you've mentioned them all they all turned up today who else in the Munster team impressed you Liam today? I'm looking I, I thought Josh Witchley the, the loose head uh, relatively unknown in the greater scheme of things uh, if you listen to Oshin's commentary his name popped up uh, quite well Niall Scallon, I, I th Scallon had, a, had a huge game he took an awful awful lot of hit Finley Witcherly if you look back in the game I don't know was he appointed it but his, his, his role in, in the offensive defence for Munster was very important. You see the white helmet. He was, he was coming off the line like leading the defence, um, which might have traditionally been like a back rowers uh, position, but he was, kind of, he was making those first hits. So if a, if a forward was taking the ball on a relatively narrow line outside the fringe defence, it was literally they were running into. I thought he had, he had a big, big uh, performance. Like some of the stuff that Haley did very... Like if you, if you benchmark Haley to Hogg, like Hogg is the British and Irish test line, Haley is not yet who would you pick on the basis of that you know it's, it's easy to kind of get distracted by big names but 
the players that were comfortable in what they were doing, the Munster players, that is, the bench made a big difference. Now, Craig Casey, like as we were talking about beforehand, John, weren't we? This guy comes on, you just go, God, here he is. I got to up my ante here. I'm tired, but I don't have any choice. I thought he did exceptionally well when he came on as well. So it was a really big, but for me, the key, the key aspect was the back row. The Munster back row were just phenomenal. We're talking about the fans there at the start of the conversation, Liam. This will be brilliant for social currency now and the hostelries around Limerick and Cork and the rest of Munster and also the, the living rooms as well for people having a drink or a cup of tea or whatever, just to be able to talk about this and then talk about their day and talk about they witnessed and, and that, that, that then accelerates and is a domino. Of course it is. You know, it, it takes a lot of effort to come and watch a match. I know people who were offered tickets for today's game and didn't come. They didn't take the free tickets. They wouldn't come. They said, I don't want to come. They'll be disappointed now. They didn't come because of what, what we witnessed here. Of course it is. The, 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 the paying public need to be rewarded. And they need to be rewarded not just by a performance, but a winning performance, and a winning performance with a style that, that echoes the culture of the people watching it. And we got that in spades today. And that's why I think the irony of what Rob Baxter said and go and finish the job, I think today really without being over dramatic or over hyperbolic I think today is, is a potential start to go and finish the job to start that job and I, I'm not so sure Munster are going to bring this to a trophy winning season but if they continue playing like this the person who wins the, the team that wins the trophy will have, earned, or <laughs> will have to earn it an awful lot harder because of performances like today just a word on Leinster yesterday, Liam, uh, 56-20 win over Connacht, 40-point, one-point victory over both legs, that they're free-flowing best. Yeah, they're outrageous, aren't they? They're absolutely outrageous. And uh, you're, you're, I think it's a little early to slip in to say, listen, this, there's no one can beat them. A team can always be beaten. Of course it is. But what, how, what do you have to do to try and beat them? Because the level of consistency, the accuracy, the decisions that defenders have to make is relentless. Anyone in the and I, I think someone like a Ross Maloney for me I would love to see him capped I think he's just so so important yet he's a a non name in in a team of Galacticos and when you've got I won't call him a fringe player but when you've got important players like that that aren't the star names who can play at the level the likes of Ross Maloney can play at uh, you kind of go wow there's just the, the bottom is a long way down there's a, there's so much talent in there and they play such a high level of rugby it's very hard to know what style of game it seems only a massive brutish pack could stunt Munster, Leinster's ability to go forward in which case could question the style of rugby they play but I'm, I don't see that out there in Europe at the moment and they won't be short of motivation after being maybe caught in the last couple of seasons as well, Ian. Yeah, I think culture, momentum builds an awful lot, obviously, but the culture of the group, uh, they're pretty hungry. And when you've got guys like, uh, like Johnny Sexton uh, in the group, I don't think they'll afford... The complacency is not something that would slip into that group too, too easily. Leicester at Welford Road, it's likely to be them. Is that it? Uh, well, it's likely to be Leicester. They, they, they've got the lead over Claremont Overn and they, they should finish that tonight. So it's, it's set to be Leinster going to Welford Road. Wow, because uh, Leicester are top of the table too, aren't they? In, in their, in their, uh, in their, uh, in the Premiership. But um, I think the, I think we play. It's it's a brilliant competition for many reasons. I remember playing it initially when we were playing against English sides or French sides, and it's very difficult to judge how good the opposition. I think in our case at the time we probably gave way too much respect to the English style of rugby and the English teams and the Leicester teams, etc. As phenomenal as they were, as successful as they were, I think Leinster won't won't like you want to play any game at home of course you do going away is, is never statistically it doesn't end well but i think leinster of all the teams will be prepared like leicester will have to play some humdinger to knock them off their perch james lowe got four tries one of them was an absolute wow moment yesterday i felt when i was watching it on telly it's really like it's amazing what has happened to irish rugby since andy farrell has taken over um, running it. The first thing I noticed, uh, although they, they didn't win their opening games and stuff, the first thing I noticed is how happy the players, the squad became. And the next thing, the telltale signs, the likes of James Lowe, um, he became a different player. And it, it seems that the management of Andy Farrell and what's going on in, uh, with Leo Cullen, etc., in, in Leinster has transformed him. Maybe there was a couple of home truths given about work rate and effort and the team cultures, etc. But James Lowe has become, we know all the things he can do, but his work rate is just off the charts now as well. And he's becoming a better player, which is incredible considering what he's been doing for the last few seasons. So it's wonderful to watch. There was a newspaper article I was reading last week, Liam, about styles of management and Alex Ferguson and control and 
the authoritarians of the past and like the likes of Guardiola now and Klopp as I watch Liverpool and Man City here they're charismatic leaders and you get the sense with Andy Farrell that they like him he's a charismatic leader Leo Cullen and Stuart Lancaster have got a winning formula and Graham Rountree now coming into Munster Keith Earls even spoke on the show during the week about how much they uh, respect him and like him at, at Munster given the, the kind of the connection he has with the, 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 the type of identity and brand that Munster brings to the table from Leicester I think that's what's required now isn't it in sport well, it is. See, the, the nature of you're a teacher or a coach or a policeman or whatever it is, when you walk into a room and you're supposed to be in everyone will look at you and judge you the minute you walk into how you dress, how you deport yourself, how you conduct yourself, how you speak. And very quickly, the, the group will start analysing, can this guy bring us to the next level? Like, that's... I said it, whatever, five minutes ago, that at the core of, of, of a team sport, there's an individual selfishness that they want to get picked and they want to win. And that's Graham Roundtree's he seems a little like Andy Farrell a, a wonderful character uh, a, a, a kind of a cornerstone of a community now can Graham Roundtree build that character and culture and build a, a group of coaches who can deliver uh, to the players an opportunity to start winning matches I spoke before the game like I thought Jack O'Donoghue was marvellous mar- the first 40 minutes he was absolutely wonderful he hasn't won anything he should be really really hungry to say well can this new coaching ticket get us to win? And you think of things like when, when Joe Smith came to Leinster and he apparently said to the likes of Johnny Sexton, listen, you know, I, I'm not a first-team coach, I haven't done that. And Sexton said, listen, we look after the culture, you look after the coaching. And you need that. And, uh, like, you know, that modern style of the combined approach towards a common goal, clearly someone has to lead. Clearly someone has to make the key decisions. Key decisions like who's going to be the coach of the style, etc., who's been selected, the transfer window, who's been brought in. All those are key decisions that the coach obviously makes. But he needs to delegate an awful lot of the heavy lifting too. I saw George Murray there on the sideline, um, who's the, the technical analyst for Munster. You know, the role and value of someone like George and the quality of someone like him, that has to go across the whole board. Yes, character of Roundtree and Andy Farrell is one thing, but look at the team Andy Farrell has built around him. Like, you've got a world-class coaching ticket, yeah. you know? And then you go, oh, look, we've just brought Paul O'Connell in as well. So you kind of go, you need that calibre because the hunger of the players now, they're not like the players that came out of school 30, 40 years ago. These, these guys coming out of school demand that the coach can bring them to a higher level. And if the coach isn't bringing them to a higher level, well, then there should, there's going to be problems. Andy Friend was speaking after the match yesterday, Liam, about Connacht needing to be better professionals and comparing them to Leinster in that regard. Where do they go from here? Because it was so committed at the sports ground, as we would have expected, but yesterday they just they didn't have any answer. They didn't, but again, we have to put a lot of things into context. I'm not, I'm not sure the context of, of those comments, but that said, Connacht have arguably been more um, successful in the last whatever when did they win the 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 domestic league was in 2016 yeah it was like they, it was around then yeah like they they didn't they've won more since they've won more than Munster have in that period so arguably Connacht have outperformed Munster in terms of trophies because they were the last between the two of them they won it in 2016 and Munster was before that so you can say that they're punching way above their weight considering the structures, if you benchmark like their academy versus the Leinster Academy, the budgets versus the Leinster budgets, the capital city versus the non-capital city, etc., you kind of say, well, the fact that Connacht are competing, but competing with style is one thing. You can see, if you took Bundyaki out of that side, it has a monumental negative effect to the performance. If you take one or two players out, whereas you look at the Munster side, you can nearly put out a second string and they're still going to probably win our domestic competition. So... I think on one hand I would congratulate Connacht enormously for what they've achieved. They're definitely punching above their weight. What's the solution? The solution is can the budgets be bumped up to allow them to bring in more players? And if they bring in more players, they're then going to dilute the Irish system, which is against the, the IRFU policies and all that. So it's a difficult one for them. Um, money solves a lot of problems, but you can't just go off and, and buy in players who don't qualify for Ireland or that system. So it's a difficult one for them. Um, but I think they deserve enormous uh, congratulations for what they've achieved. Yeah, and Andy Friend has done a, definitely done a very good job this season. Just to finish, Liam, before we go, um, Munster, I think they'll feel they've got a chance in the quarterfinals. It's either a trip to Ulster or a home game against Toulouse, looking to avenge last year's defeat. But from everything you say to me in the conversation here, they have the raw materials. 
Yeah, like you, you, I'm basing all that on what I saw and what extra brought to the party. Obviously, Ulster and Toulouse are entirely different, uh, for that matter. But would would uh, would Munster have an issue going to Ulster? I don't think so. Would Munster have, in terms of the tradition and the culture they have, have an issue with coming that Toulouse come here? I don't think so. So I think what today has today is a very very important uh, victory for a variety of ways. Uh, obviously, the victory itself, but the manner in which they won it, the manner in which they subdued Exeter completely. Like really did, didn't they? They made them really struggle in, in lots and lots of ways, down to 14 men, and they looked like they were the stronger side. Um, so I think there's huge grounds for optimism. Are Munster, do Munster need to get better? Of course they do. Does their bench, for example, need to get better? Of course it does. So there are improvements without doubt. So I don't think we should be celebrating in that sense. But I think we should be celebrating that that what we saw today was a glimpse of what Munster can do and how they can play. And it was a definite glimpse of a lot of history in that performance and that fixture today, which is really heartwarming. So lots of additions need to go to it, but I think there's a lot of a lot of happy people in Limerick and rightfully so. Smiles on the faces of the, the people going home and, and going out maybe this evening for their Easter weekend. Enjoy your Easter weekend, Liam Tolan. I hope you have a good one. Thank you, John. And uh, Liam Tolan there. Just a small matter of the championship is underway as well and we'll uh, bring you right up to date with scores and that uh, in the near future. Just let you know in the Premier League results are in that Man United have beaten Norwich 3-2 to get right back in the hunt for a top four spot with Cristiano Ronaldo scoring a, that, that hat-trick against Norwich. So a 3-2 win for Manchester United against Norwich today. Um, it is... Arsenal losing 1-0 to Southampton uh, Jan Bednarek with the goal Arsenal had a real chance to put pressure on Tottenham after Spurs lost 1-0 to Brighton earlier on Leandro Trossard scoring at the new White Hart Lane and Watford won Brentford 2 a result from the Premier League in League 1 rather than 1 Ipswich 0 is a result uh, Wigan 0 Cambridge 0 at 8 a score but Liverpool on track for the quadruple 3-1 up away to Manchester City with uh, Sadio Mane scoring twice and also Ibrahima Kanate again with the header uh, City are trailing in that game Jack Grealish putting one back but it's 89 minutes in the watch and City is set to lose that game just let you know in the hurling in the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship uh, round robin Galway 1-11 Wexford 8 points so Galway 6 points over at half time we're going to look ahead to the Fermanagh Tyrone game that small matter of a football championship match getting underway this evening with the All-Ireland Champions visiting Brewster Park and we're going to have a look ahead to that with a man who won the Samaguar Cup at Tyrone and also managed for Manor. It's Peter Canavan, and he's coming up after this.